Hello, I'm John Grom, and welcome to the 63rd Right and Left Discussion Forum. We hold our discussion forum twice monthly to provide an example of civil discussions, to demonstrate the value of keeping an open mind, and to prove the educational power of having a sincere interest in the opinion of others. Today our panel will discuss how the political right and left uh, differ on the uh, issues of the day. Today's panel, beginning on my left, is Jerry Ritzman, Chairman of the Board of Ritzman Natural Health Pharmacies. On his left is Dr. Natalie Sidorenko, writer, consultant, and educator. On her left is Brian Lawbaugh, President of R&B Financial Services. And on his left is Patty Haskins, retired math teacher and current member of the Wadsworth City Council. Jerry, with uh, the uh, presidential primary campaigns in full swing, we should be hearing a lot about the fundamental differences in the political philosophies of the right and left. Are we? What are they? Well, I think the key word in your question, John, is uh, we should be hearing a lot of the, uh, about the positions, the fundamental positions and so forth and so forth. But unfortunately, what we hear are the sound bites of who insulted whom. Um, uh, and of, of the candidates playing to whatever crowd that they are speaking to, uh, and that will, their position will change day to day, depending on to whom they're speaking. Uh, and to find out fundamental positions, you have to dig a lot deeper. Uh, and as a typical voter, and I consider myself one, I don't invest a lot of time in doing that. I invest my time politically in uh, listening to the to uh, radio reports, uh, which are short, quick hits uh, that outline maybe the things that are going to draw attention, which don't have a lot of meat to it. Um, and so, no, we're not hearing those fundamental positions of difference. And so we go back to what our preconceived uh, notions are of those individuals, whether within the party or from a different party, uh, and hope that the whole thing gets sorted out uh, uh, for us to choose between less candidates mm -hmm. and less positions. So, no, we're not hearing that, and it's a fault of our own individually, uh, but I think there's uh, enough responsibility to go around to the media mm -hmm. and to the individuals that are in the races themselves. Okay. Natalie, there's an awful lot of stereotyping going on between the left and the right. How accurate do you think those stereotypes are? Well, <coughs> I guess I would start with a definition of the word stereotype. So from a from a academic standpoint, the word stereotype in and of itself is not an automatic negative. <coughs> the word stereotype is a word used to describe um, the characteristics or qualities of a group of people that apply generally and most of the time. Okay, so most mm. of the time academics like to read. That's a stereotype. That's not a problem to have a stereotype. The problem is when the stereotype turns into a prejudice or some type of discrimination. Mm -hmm. So I believe that some of the stereotypes about conservatives and liberals are true. I think what happens because of the media, as Jerry was pointing out, their lack of talking about things of substance, is that the media drives broad stereotypes that then end up resulting in negative connotations about the left and about the right so that liberals don't like conservatives and conservatives don't like liberals. That's unfortunate to me. Because of what they think. Because of what they supposedly think. So uh. what's unfortunate to me is that if liberals and conservatives would sit down and discuss things, they might find that they're closer on it than, than they believe just by listening to the media. Mm -hmm. For instance, a stereotype is generalized to a group of people, so all Republicans believe in X or all liberals believe in Y. I don't think that you can put people into those types of categories. For a lot of these <clears> issues, <throat> the environment, the economy, um, I am very socially liberal, but I'm more fiscally conservative. But I would call myself a liberal, but my father calls me a closet Republican because he said most of my my beliefs are in line with that. So I don't feel like we can fit into one box. I feel like because we have this two-party system that has created the boxes, we get the sound bites during the debates and we don't really know where these, the last two debates, I don't know where the candidates lie because when I listen to all the Republicans on stage, 
I would not group them all in the same conservative mm-hmm. box. They sounded so disparate from each other. They sounded mm-hmm. so different. So I feel like it's, you know, it's very important to talk civilly, as you <clears> said, <throat> which is why something like this is so important because it's still my belief that general Americans have far more that unites them than divides them, mm-hmm. but the sound bites are divisive mm-hmm. because yeah. they turn stereotypes yeah. into prejudices. And then, and just, I'll jump back in here, John, and, and look what happened to John Boehner, with John Boehner, yes. in the uh, last week. Yes. You know, uh, a month ago, y- you read reports or editorials and so forth, and, and John Boehner was, was a bad guy. Now that he has quit and he has been kind of run out of office by the radicals in the party, yes. mm-hmm. where he was doing what you were uh, advocating, I think, Natalie, is that let, let's talk about it and work this out. Yes. So he tried to do that and he just finally said, I can't do it. And so the, yeah. the, the, the raucous extremists have, have put a guy that's trying to bring that process together and he finally just said, I. I Mm-hmm. And I actually had great empathy for him, right. even though yeah. several things about his oh, tenure right. there I completely right. disagreed with, but I right. felt great empathy for him because of that extremism on both sides. And so, you could take it with any issue, but, and I want to turn it over to Brian, but just quickly, like for example, most people believe that people have their own rights, but they might feel deep convictions about things like right to life, be it the death penalty, abortion, whatnot. But that's not what people hear. Even my own children in their news bits at school hear the extreme side, right? Like <coughs> liberals that are, are so vile that what they say is, I can't believe you would bring that child into the world. Look, I mean, it's a tax burden on us. You should have aborted that kid. And then on the other side, people saying, it doesn't matter if that 11 year old is scarred. She's mm. pregnant, she must have that child even if it's a result of rape. Those are two hugely extreme circumstances. That's not what the majority of people right. believe. Mm-hmm. People are more civil-minded and more rational than that. But that's not what's highlighted in the media. Yeah. As a closet Republican, Brian, do you think that... Uh, As a non-closeted Republican. I'd like to help Natalie come out of the closet <laughs> yeah. and embrace her Republican conservative yeah. roots. Um, was there a question that you wanted to start out with? Well, saying, I was wondering if was you just thought take Natalie off on what's stay in the closet. Said. That's no. a, <laughs> I think I've ever been in the closet on anything. Yeah. Um, I, I agree that the media, and I would put uh, a lot of the blame on the news cycle uh, and how media, uh, uh, I guess, caters to a very um, unattentive, uh, short attention span, uh, <clears throat> uh, I guess, their, their constituents, if you will. but. The, everything is so quick. When you're talking about the news cycle, you're talking about the three uh, 24 hour networks? Yeah, 24 hour networks. Everybody's looking for a sound bite. Everybody's looking for the gotcha moment. Um, everybody's trying to make uh, someone look bad. Um, and it shortens up people's real attention span to really look at an issue and try to determine what is the real issue and how do you get there. And um, I, I don't think it does anybody any good. I don't think we're ever going to be able to go back to like the Lincoln Douglas debates that lasted all day and each, each you know, a more d- debate forum. I think the last debates were a circus. I, I just, I got nothing out of those. Um, there hasn't been a presidential debate you know. in my lifetime. They're not really. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, 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 yeah. At least when you think about the Harvard uh, right. the debate pattern. More, more of a debate. Yeah. Um, but I, I think we've, uh, if we if we could step back and go back to more of a civil type of debate, taking the issues, you can agree to disagree, mm-hmm. but you don't have to throw a, a bomb or you know th- throw the person under the bus. I mean, we can agree to disagree on things, and that doesn't make that individual a bad person. And I think that's what happens sometimes is the process vilifies people. Right. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Boehner did the, uh, 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 the best job that he could. And I agree, there is a faction within the Republican Party that I don't particularly agree with and the method that they want to go about it. I don't think it suits anybody's uh, desire to have a a functioning government. Uh, But with that said, there are people on the other side of the aisle that cater to that extreme left, uh, you know, tear it all down, burn it all up, it's either our way or the highway attitude. And And I don't think that gets us anywhere. And the most extreme one of all in the United States Congress, uh, Bernie Sanders is uh, moving up in the polls. Mm -hmm. 
and he is an avowed socialist. Mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, uh, Patty, uh, you know, that it occurs to me that if uh, Brian brought up the uh, the idea of a debate, that if we did have legitimate debates on uh, subjects b uh, between uh, uh, like foreign affairs or poverty or whatever, that we might find that uh, there's not that much difference between both sides. Poverty, for instance, that uh, the uh, Republicans are just as much uh, interested in uh, ending poverty as Democrats, but their methods are different. Exactly. And, and, and that, would, that would come out. And, and you agree with that? You're nodding his oh, high, high, Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, first of all, when you look <coughs> at the similarities, I mean, whether you're a conservative or a, Repu or a, a liberal, you embrace the Constitution. Mm -hmm. You believe in the Constitution. Your interpretation of it might be different, but you know, there's no one that you know. I keep seeing people pull out constitutions out of their pocket and saying, <laughs> "We're the only ones that are following it." No, both sides believe in that constitution. Both sides want what's best for the country and want to solve problems that we have because I think they all recognize the same problems. It is, as you mentioned, uh, the methods by which they go about that. And, and that's one of the things that we have to address. Um, I, I don't know, I've always, I mean, if you look at all the issues <sighs> where they differ, for example, you mentioned poverty. I think that the left's impression of the right is they don't care about the poor. And the right feels that the left only wants to get that top 1%. They're jealous of them. And that's not the case. It's the way in which they try to improve po poverty. The left has embraced various types of social programs. And, you know, the latest being to increase the minimum wage, to help the poverty, you know, the poor come out of that poverty level. Mm -hmm. The, I, I don't agree with this, but I think the conservatives tend to still feel that you do it through a, a form of trickle-down economics, that you help the, the rich and it will work down. I also think that the, now I might be wrong on this, but I think conservatives tend to be, um, <coughs> want to be more dependent upon charities to support the poor. And, you know, if you look at, I mean, some of the most conservative people on TV have donated millions of dollars to various charities. So it's not that they don't care about the poor. They're just looking at a different avenue to do that. Um, we look at the economy itself and the way that the economy is going to grow. And, you know, one says, one side says, well, we're going to put all this money into building roads and so forth, and that'll create jobs. The other side said, we're going to, you know, cut taxes so people have more spendable income. Um, and particularly for the rich because they're the, the job creators. And it, I don't see that happening, but that's the way they're going. Um, we look at example of military and war. Conservatives are portrayed as hawks and liberals are portrayed as doves. And you know, at, when 9-11 occurred, I don't think there was a dove in the United States. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think the difference is how that military is used and when you use it. There are, you know, they have different scenarios as to when to use it. Both sides accuse each other of using crises in the country for political purposes. And I've heard that claim against the liberals you know, what, I, what was the phrase, you never let a good crisis go, go to waste. Go, yeah. go to waste. Ra 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 Rahm Emanuel. Rahm Emanuel. <laughs> and yet we hear, um, uh, who is the guy that's running for Speaker of the House now? McCafferty? McCarthy. Uh, McCarthy? McCarthy? He was on Sean Hannity's show. And he said the Benghazi, you know, because we're really proud of the Benghazi um, investigation because we were able to get basically dirt on Hillary. And she's gone down in the polls. He actually said that? He actually said that. <laughs> well, shame on him. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, um, you know, one of the, you know, you mentioned the, the fringe. I don't know that we just have liberals and conservatives anymore because we also have that ultra conservative and the mm -hmm. ultra liberal. Mm -hmm. You know, John Boehner was ranked, I think, it was eighth or ninth most conservative man in Congress. Wow. And he's not. 
Yeah, he's very really? conservative. I would have yes. definitely thought him of him as a moderate, the way no. he tried to work with Congress on both no. sides. No, yeah. but as they could, when you wow. looked at his views and his stances, he went along with conservative principles down the line, hmm. but he's not conservative enough in some eyes because he has the audacity to work with the other party. You mentioned compromise. We look at compromise, at, and we had a whole discussion on this, I mm -hmm. think, the one time, mm -hmm. that compromise means you're giving in. Maybe we should start calling it consensus, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. in consensus, you're looking for, okay, okay. where do we agree? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I wonder yeah. if, you know, in, in, in the approach, you know, um, so many times, and we talk about poverty, we, we, you mentioned poverty, there can be other things. Is it, are we treating the symptom or are we treating the disease to give it a medical parallel? Mm -hmm. If we continue.